So, I read comments under the Marvel's Designer tutorial that I made some time ago, and there was actually a lot of unhappy people commenting how ridiculously expensive Marvel's Designer got. I actually got a nice price back in 2019 because I was able to get the Christmas discount for the version 8, which I still own and I'm still using. But after reading those comments, I decided to have a look at what Marvel's Designer costs these days for version 9 and 10. And boy was I surprised, because it seems they completely transferred to the subscription model. And everybody loves subscription models, right? So I decided this might be a good time to have a look if I can do what I do in Marvelous Designer, but in Blender and for free. And what I learned, I will share with you in this video. So enjoy my friends. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, this is a character that I made in Fuse. Tutorial for that you can of course find on my channel and it's doing this little animation here. And we will be using this character to add a cloth to, sew it together and then simulate it. Basically the same thing that we did in the Marvelous Designer tutorial, only this time just using Blender. So let's start with adding a plane, rotate it 90 degrees from this front view and scale it so that it spans the character. You can of course hit G, Z, Y and X to lock the transformations to a certain axis. And of course you can do the same thing when rotating with R and scaling with S. From the side view, I push the plane in front of the character to be very close like this. And then with Ctrl R, I add a edge loop and delete one half of it. With that done, I switch back to the object mode and use this mirror modifier with the clipping option on. I do this to save some time because using the mirror option of course lets you edit just one side of this garment. You can see me playing here with the geometry. I decided to make it smaller after I've added one more edge loop. And now I'm starting the process of pushing and pulling vertices, uh, shaping it. And every now and then I add some more edge loops with Ctrl R to add a little bit of definition. I end up with this plane that is slightly slimmer at the waist of the character. And let's get rid of this face around the neck here. Also, let's add some more edge loops to add even more definition. And yeah, now let's just shape the garment. This is basically the same thing as we would do in Marvelous Designer, only there we would not focus on the topology at all. Unlike here, where in Blender, we have total freedom over what the topology is. All you have to do is to create a shape like this with roughly rectangular faces. And when you're done, select all the faces with A and Alt E to bring out this menu and then extrude all the faces to the back of the body like this. Then you just get rid of all the faces where you don't want to have any sewing happening. So at the hands and at the top here. And then in areas that you want connected together, you select them and then hit delete and only faces option. And you can see now that what we're left with is just these edge lines that will be our sewing lines. Now, of course, we also want to have this part connected together and to select this row of faces very fast, you can just click on this one hold down control and then click on the last one and it will select the shortest path towards that face. Hit delete and only faces. And of course we forgot this bottom part here. That one we will delete as a hole because we want to have a hole there for the legs. Once you're done with that, select all of these edges that are remaining and add them into a vertex group, which we call switch, no. Uh, sewing. Yes, that's better. Now to add even more subdivisions to the mesh, uh, we could go in and start adding loops with Ctrl R. But at this point, it gets kind of slow because we have so many faces now. Uh, so instead, let's just select all the faces of this front and back part. Of course, deselect these edges. We don't want to subdivide those. And right click and hit this subdivide option here. This gives you double the definition with just one click. Let's actually get rid of this sewing line. I don't want the fabric to connect here because the ancient chitons were usually not connected at the sleeves up here. 
And now is actually a good time to check if the subdivision process didn't add any more edges than we want into the vertex group. The fastest way to check it is to hit this select button and all of the edges that are in the vertex group will be selected. And you can see that we have more edges than we want in there. So to be sure, just select all the faces and remove all of them from the vertex group and then again select only the edges we want as the sewing lines and add them back in with this assign button. If later something doesn't really work out in your simulation and you don't really know what's happening, always make sure what edges are actually in this sewing vertex group because it's very important. And this is also a good time to apply the mirror modifier, so do it. Before we add the cloth simulation, let's actually click on the character that we have here and add a collision simulation to it because we don't want the fabric to go through the character later. Don't mind the settings here, just type in these values and we will adjust everything later. Adding a cloth simulation to your object is actually as easy as going into this tab here and adding cloth. Right off the bat, you can increase this quality here from five to 12, but uh, this will slow down the simulation. So maybe not do it at this stage. I did it just for experimenting, but this option is actually good to be raised at the very end of your simulation process. And now it's all about experimenting with some numbers here in this cloth simulation setup. Uh, and you can see here, we have all these presets here to choose from. What preset you choose or what these values up here are is not too important right now. Uh, I will actually show you my final setup uh, at the end of this video. Uh, first off though, let's go down here and activate this self collision. And again, if you want, you can increase this number to be seven up here. Uh, but again, this will slow down your computation. But at this stage, when we don't have our mesh to subdivide just yet, it's kind of okay. Also, let's go into this shape menu here and activate sewing. That's very important because only then your sewing lines will actually start sewing your garment together like it would in Marvelous Designer. So input a value of 14 here, maybe and 0.02 for the shrinking factor. And again, it's not too important right now. All that is important is that you have some values here. And with that done, make sure you have down here this timeline. For these simulations, it's very handy to have it here. And basically, just start your animation with spacebar. And if you've done everything as I did, your cloth should start sewing and simulating together. Of course, this is very basic. It's not at all what we want. We want some wrinkling and some more dynamic setup with more resolution. So that's what we will be working on right now. But good thing is it's simulating, the cloth is sewing together. So this is a good start, I think. What I did now is I choose one of the presets here, this silk one, and immediately what you can see is that our mesh is not shaded smooth. So in object mode, right click on the garment and shade smooth. Every time you want to reset your simulation, you just get back to the first frame with this icon here and it will reset it. Great thing about making garments in Blender like this is also that you can edit the base mesh anytime. And this editing is actually much faster than in Marvelous Designer. Not the simulation, but the editing is faster. Good thing to have though is quads in your geometry and try to make majority of your faces square. Also, always make sure that your scale is applied you can check it by looking at this transform tab here and the scale should be uniformly one. And also try to always push it as close as possible to the body. And if it's falling too much to the ground after you start simulating, just push it up so that it has some room to fall onto the body. At this stage, you can also add a subdivision modifier in front of the cloth simulation here in the modifiers menu. And this will increase the resolution and quality of the simulation significantly, but it will also slow it down significantly. So I usually add it at this point, but disable it until I am more happy with the basic settings. 
Before we start setting up our final cloth settings, uh, make sure to activate this face orientation mode and always check if the red colors are inside and the blue colors are outside your garment. It basically shows you the orientation of your normals and the red ones should always point inwards while the blue ones should point outwards. This will help your simulation in the end. You will be able to avoid some unexpected results this way. So if it's not, just select these faces and hit flip in this menu here. I actually added this option to my quick favorites. You can just right click on this option here and add it there. Then you just open up the quick favorites menu with Q. Cool, now the red color is inside, the normals are facing correctly. And at this point, everything should be simulating and sewing together without a problem for you. First things first, make sure again that you have some collisions on the body model and you can input 0.1 in here and 0.1 in the inner socket as well. This is just how much space will be between the cloth simulation and the body model. For the low poly mesh that I will simulate, uh, I chose quality steps to be six, which is kind of a good balance in quality and performance. Then speed multiplier, I put to two to make the simulation a bit faster to not happen basically like in a slow motion. Down here, you can set some weight to all of the vertices of your mesh, but it really has to be a small number here because otherwise your cloth will just tear up everything. So go with like 0 0.00001 if you want to experiment with this. I didn't add any weight to it. Uh, I just went with zero both here and in the air viscosity. I set the viscosity to zero to not add any drag to the simulation, but later we might change it to something different. Down here in the stiffness menu, I added 30 to the tension. Basically the higher these values here are, the more they will resist these properties. So uh, we will have a quite a bit of resistance to tension, uh, also to subsequent compression, and we will have a low shearing, so the cloth will not be too springy. Also, I added zero to bending here. I don't want it to resist the bending at this stage at all. So that's it for these basic settings. Down here, there is a cache menu. We will be using it later quite a bit. I actually extended this end and then you can hit bake and bake your simulation so that it's quite a bit faster. Uh, let's not do it now. Just make sure we have the sewing active. Uh, max sewing force I lowered to four and the sewing factor to 0 0.01. I added some more friction to the self collision. Eight will do. And I added eight to the friction in the body collision settings as well. Uh, and with that, the simulation looked like this. Not too bad, I'd say, but very low poly. So let's improve it now, because I want some fine wrinkles in it. Of course, don't forget that every time you simulate your cloth, it caches the simulation. And you can basically use this cache to be baked, and then your simulation will be much faster. At this point, it doesn't look like he's wearing ancient Greek chiton. It actually looks like he's some lunatic from a psychiatric ward, uh, you know, wearing just that hospital coat, which we don't really want. Uh, well, one thing that Blender is missing when it comes to simulating cloth and fabric is internal sewing lines, which is what's awesome about Marvel's designer, because there you can just paint a line and you can add some elasticity to it and basically sew things together and make them springy, make them more elastic at places you want, which is not really possible in Blender, uh, at least not in such a user-friendly and fast way. What's also not possible is to tuck the cloth, as you can see me doing here in Marvelous Designer. So that's a pity. So how do we add this waste part where everything is sewn and pushed together in Blender without any internal polygon lines like in Marvelous? Well, you actually just get rid of these faces using the delete and only faces option. And immediately you add these into your sewing group. 
and really select all the faces that I'm selecting here and also for it to take effect, don't forget to delete the bake. And that's it. Actually, that's all you have to do for that. You just delete some of the faces and make the lines in between to be the sewing lines. What happens though is that your cloth kind of shrinks to the top, so it's always better to make it longer vertically and maybe even push it up like this uh, and then it will produce some good results. Okay, and with the one last test with the low poly mesh, I was kind of happy with how it turned out and I moved on to the high poly mesh. So first step was to activate one level of subdivision above my cloth modifier here. So that added much more resolution to my mesh and subsequently the simulation was much more detailed but it changed the properties of the cloth. So I had to play around with some values in the cloth simulation. I actually left the quality steps to be six and the speed multiplier two, uh, the vertex mass and air viscosity, I turned to zero again and I increased the tension here to 50, uh, compression to 10, shear to three and bending to 0 0.05, which is a slight increase. Down here, I used quality steps of seven, decreased the friction to four, and in here in the body, set it to nine. And with that, I achieved this result that you can see here. It's kind of floaty, not too perfect, but this is just really about uh, experimentation, which you can do on your own. So with that, you can see the simulation here. And of course, if you're not making an animation, but a static render, you can always apply these modifiers. You get a static mesh without any simulation. And for example, with the new cloth brushes, you can play around and improve your wrinkles. It's almost like cheating really with these latest tools in Blender. So yeah, definitely change these modes here. Uh, grab is different than drag. Uh, I found that pinch is kind of nice to use in some tight areas, but that's not really the topic of this video. The point is, you definitely can create garments for free in Blender, which is one of the pros, of course. Uh, this is all free, you can do it in Blender anytime. Uh, in Marvel's Designer, it costs you quite a bit, but still, it is much more user friendly, the results are much faster, and usually they look much better. Uh, I think Blender is really still not at the stage where it could say, okay, I do this job as good as Marvelous does. That's not really true yet. Hopefully in the future it will be, but not yet. However, if you don't really want to pay for Marvelous Designer, which I completely understand, you can try out this workflow and maybe share your results and settings. So I hope this was useful and of course don't forget you can watch other tutorials on my channel on this very topic. For example those two marvelous designer tutorials or there is a garment texturing tutorial that you can watch and learn something about Substance Painter. Speaking of Substance Painter I have a course at cgboost.com and if you want to get quickly into using Substance Painter uh, you can check it out and if you buy it you will support the project Heroes of Bronze which I'm working on currently. And also if you want the project files for this tutorial I have Patreon page. You can support the project there and get all sorts of free stuff, tutorials, live streams of course and all the links are of course down in the description. And with that I thank you for watching and as always stay creative my friends. Martin out.